I have Erica here from the Erica Lucas YouTube channel. Welcome, Erica. Hi. Hi, Robin. Hi, everybody. So tell me a little bit about yourself and about your channel. Yeah, thank you. So I'm really glad to be part of the conversation about decluttering and minimalism. I started four and a half years ago on YouTube and accidentally became an, a YouTuber about decluttering and minimalism. I was a YouTuber about homeschool stuff and just shared about the things that we were using. I had 90 subscribers back in 2019, a small little homeschool community online that we were connected with. And I just shared our basement full of stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff. And we had boxes to the ceiling. We couldn't use the room. We had gotten delivery from the Navy and I was overwhelmed by stuff. And I shared that, that vulnerability, that feeling of not knowing how to begin and what to do. And a lot of people connected with that feeling. And it just grew from there. So I, it was been a journey for the last four and a half years about learning how I feel about stuff and how to connect and how to let go. And I'm really grateful to the thousands of people that have come along with me on this journey. Yeah. Well, and it's so interesting because you are, you, you have such a great channel. It is, uh, you're so honest and vulnerable and just like real about absolutely everything that you're doing as you're decluttering. And I love it. Like one of the things that comes to mind was you like decluttering your attic. There was something about a penguin. I just remember like reading oh. the comments, all these people mentioned about this penguin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, our attic had the insulation had come down. And so many things had been covered by the fiberglass that came apart from the insulation in our attic that I had, I was forced to let go of a lot of things just from a safety perspective. And this penguin was gifted to me by my mother who was gifted by her mother. And so it had been passed down and it was a fabric penguin. And we just didn't want to take the chance that the kids would touch it with fiberglass on it. It just wasn't worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just so interesting because a lot of people, they come across those decisions that they have to make when they're decluttering mm -hmm. because, and, and it's really hard for a lot of people to let go. And you've gotten to a point where you are, able to let go of things and making the decisions and that. And that took months of not being able to make those decisions and being paralyzed by those decisions and not knowing how to get rid of stuff, what to even let go of, how to get it out of my house, who to give it to, because I felt guilty trashing so many things. But I also knew I didn't want to live like that anymore. Yeah. And, and it, it's so true. Like so many people are living amongst so much stuff and it's like that stuff is not serving you anymore. It really is just like hurting you at this point when your stuff really is meant to just sort of support your life. That's right. And it's always a pain or you're just frustrated to the point that you can't stand it anymore. That's always my impetus for letting things go where I'm like, I'm fed up. I'm fed up with stepping on stuff, tripping on stuff, cleaning stuff, having to move 10 things just to wipe a counter. Um, and you get fed up with all of that stuff and dealing with it and managing with it. And you say, what is better? The pain of keeping it or the release of letting go? What is going to be better for me in the long run? Yeah, absolutely. So can you tell me a little bit about some struggles you had with decluttering when you initially started and even some you still face? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I often wonder if I'll always face decluttering challenges because seasons of life change and your hobbies change and interests change. And you're, you're constantly presented with those decluttering decisions, even if you've let go of thousands of things. So in the beginning for me, it was knowing how to even start. Do I start with a shelf? Do I start with a category? Do I start with a room, a drawer? And if I start, how do I start? How do I decide about every little thing in that space. And that that took a long time. That took almost six months for me to figure out my own mantra and my own process. And here we are four and a half years later, and I'm still struggling with that just in case category where I've spent money on something, even if it was before I started decluttering, and I, I might want to have it or I might need it. And so I still struggle with that category today. 
That category is so funny. It's like the sunk cost fallacy. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about, uh, I had gone to a local town and had looked at this dress they had in the mirror and they were seamstresses. So I was like, I want you to make me a dress just like that. And it had this weird collar. Like it was just like this little thin thing of fabric. And for some reason I was like, yeah, I want that. And they were like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then I was like, I don't know why I chose that, but it was like a, not a town nearby. And, and I just remember being like, I'm not going to wear this dress. And then I, it, it took a while until I was like, I am holding onto this, but I'm not going to wear it because I spent the money on it. It's the sunk cost. Yeah. And the effort fallacy. in a different town. And yeah, you were so attached to what it took to get that dress mm -hmm. and yeah. not the actual dress. Yeah. And sometimes it, yeah. it takes a long time to come to that realization and that level of acceptance where you say, what did I do to myself? Or why did I spend this money? I'm not going to get this money back. I really need to let this go because I'm tired of managing it. Yeah. And it's like lesson learned, like chalk it up to a lesson learned. In life, like we go through so many times, so many lessons. I mean, it's, and yes, like some of them are financial. And I think like that's a big part of decluttering anything anyway, is like managing what's coming into the house just as much as what's going out. And sometimes it's like, oh, Whoops, I made a mistake. Like, I'm not perfect. Yeah. And you know, the, the one in one out rule that gets discussed sometimes. And I, I still, even now, four and a half years later, I don't think that would work for me where I bring one thing in and I let one thing go. Cause I don't think I've struck the perfect balance of stuff where one in one out would do something for me. Um, I think it would have to be one in 10 out <laughs> to, to, and it really depends what that one thing is. I mean, if it's a dress that you have been wanting, and and curating for your closet, then why get rid of a dress just because you brought one in? Um, and it comes down to what you use, you need, you love, and you want to care for in your life. And that that took years of practice and still practice. I can't imagine not utilizing that thought process. Do I use it, need it, love it, want it? And if it doesn't fit that category, then why am I holding on to it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when you're dealing with your just in case items, what do you say to yourself? Well, I like the 2020 rule, um, which is, you know, if you if it's $20 or less, and you can replace it um, for $20 or less, and, and in 20 minutes, then consider letting it go. I like that as a threshold. For me, it's still that's 20 bucks, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. So it's still money. Um, and the time factor isn't isn't as important to me with the availability of online shopping now. I mean, it's just the time factor isn't so much. But when I'm I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to keep an inventory of something, um, do I want to clean it? Do I want to pick it up when the kids need help picking it up? <laughs> do I want to dust it? Do I want to deal with lost parts like a board game <laughs> or a puzzle? Um, and do I want to see it? Do I want to walk around my house and have that be a point of love and joy to look at, uh, you know, board games stacked high? Does that bring us joy or does that just bring me stress because I know I have to manage it? And identifying the feeling helps me let go or keep just in case items. I really like a maybe box for the just in case items where if I stash it for a month or two, I didn't need it. It's just not going to come into life. And I can let it go to a family that would use it. Ah, uh, I love that. That's great. And it's so interesting. I was actually recently talking with Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone. And she, we were talking about toys and how like sometimes a toy is kind of run its course by the end of Christmas day. Sure. And you can't force it. Like you're obviously not going to force it on your kids to play with it. But you also, it's just like, okay, like. That's what it is. And uh, and that, that's a really good example because I, I mean, my family knows that I like to practice minimalism and that we don't like to bring a bunch of stuff into the house anymore. But at the same time, I don't put that pressure on my family. If they want to buy the kids stuff, please do. And the kids love opening gifts and enjoy it. Maybe it's just for Christmas Day. And then it gets released from our lives. And those things now after years of decluttering, those things surface very quickly. What doesn't get played with, what was loved, what was, you know, enjoyed for a day and they're ready to not see it again. 
Um, and the kids are pretty good about recognizing that stuff as well. Now watching me do it, they can say, I, I really didn't like this. We can give this away. Yeah, my kids are pretty good about that too. And now, what do you say about the people who, and I don't know if you've come across this, but they have family members who are like, where's that thing I gave you? Or I gave your kids that thing or whatever. We're lucky because, I mean, nobody asks that. I do think there's the odd family member who might not be thrilled that we declutter things, but I also don't personally feel like I need to justify decluttering something. But what do you say to people who... I take the hit. I it, I don't put that hit on my kids. So if if somebody gave them a toy and they say, oh, does, do they still play with that? Lego said I got them. I, I'm honest about it and say, no, it went in, it broke and it went all over the house and the pieces got lost um, or we donated it. They played with it 10 times and decided they were finished with it. Um, and I take the hit and I'm honest about it. And I think I'm comfortable with that because I've been doing it for years now that it's not, it's not out of the blue for my family, for me to say, I donated it. <laughs> um, but that's, you know, there's some things that we have as gifts that we keep that maybe we wouldn't normally, but they were gifts. And so we hang on to them for longer than I probably would like. But that's the balance of clutter and me focusing on minimalism more than my husband and my children. <laughs> mm -hmm. And stuff yes. just sometimes has to stick around. Um, and hiding it helps. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the same. Like I, I, I am, my family, when I first started, we started around the same time. And I remember my family, they kept saying, you're obsessed with minimalism. And I'm like, I'm not, and I'm not touching your stuff. Like I'm only decluttering my stuff and like household things. And of course, like anything that was like, you know, my husband and I, you know, both own it. Uh, you know, I'd right. be like, you're okay if I get rid of this and he'd be fine with it. <laughs> but it, do you ever, so for me, sometimes my family, they, they downsized my grandparents' house and there was the odd thing where I'm like, I still have, like, I could, that could be useful or that is sentimental mm -hmm. or whatever. And there's the, or people will say like, I was going to give you this, but I thought you would just declutter it. Like, do you ever run into that with family where they're like, mm -hmm. you don't want anything. And I'm like, <laughs> do you want this or are you going to donate it? Um, and I think um, my mother-in-law in particular is fantastic about it. She will ask before she gives us something that's sentimental or from her family line. She will ask if we want it first. Um, and so that's nice. And we we often choose to say yes, because that's part of my children's lineage as well. And it's some sentimental things that maybe they would like or we might like to have around. Um but the grandparents in my house, in our family are pretty good now about saying, what do the kids want specifically for, for Christmas? Um, and it's usually gift cards so they can go shopping um, or gift cards for the games they like to play online. And those are nice consumable things that are brought into the house. The children love them. They use them. And then they're, it's not taking up any space. It's not something they have to clean. But they're also 10, 8, and 7. And we have lots of toys that we've had for years. And they get new toys for birthdays and Christmas and board games. And we just recalibrate our house to match whatever it is. So in the last year, board games have become humongous part of our lifestyle. And so I had to change the boundary that we used for board games. I had to put it in a different room and give it a different boundary because we had so many and they didn't want to get rid of them because they liked them. We have less toys, little building toys like you have when you're a toddler and now we have more board games so it's just a, for us about recalibrating each space to fit whatever it is we're interested in at the time and then someday that space will be something else I love that idea of like recalibrating the space like putting it that way because yeah like there are times where I'm just like if I just <clears throat> move this here then it works so much better because either it's smaller or larger and you're like, okay, like it's almost like paint, playing Tetris or you're something. Playing Tetris in your own house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Now, um, do you have any regrets for decluttering? I do. And I, I only regret it because my husband gives me a hard time about it, but <laughs> it's a chef's knife and it was, this was, at the very onset of decluttering. So we're talking 
four years ago. I was only six months in and I was attacking my kitchen and getting rid of a lot of things. And this chef's knife was part of a set in a, in a wooden block. And the chef's knife was rusted and just not something I used. It didn't feel food safe. And I have learned since then that you can repair a rusty chef's knife and bring it back to life for use. But I just got rid of it. I trashed it because and bought a new one. And he was upset because it was part of the set that like had come into our marriage. It wasn't something we got, it was something he had before. And I didn't talk to him with him about it beforehand. Um, he was deployed. I was making decisions in the moment and really trying to get rid of stuff and deal with three small children and the house full of junk. And in hindsight, I absolutely should have sought his input for something that was shared and something that was his before we got married. And that was a lesson learned for me. And still now today, when he uses the the replacement knife, he's like, oh, man, I really miss that knife. Like, But he's just giving me a hard time to make me laugh because it's the one yeah. thing out of thousands of things that is still mm. talked about. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the thing, right? Like, you know, there are so many things that we do declutter and maybe the odd thing. It's like with the just in case, I always say like the chances of you using it are so slim. Absolutely. And with this, like, yes, he was a little bit um, bothered by it. And now he teases you about it, which I think is great. But I really... I, I was reading some quotes recently or, and Churchill once said that um, mistakes are rarely fatal. Mm. And I thought that's a really good one for decluttering because sometimes people I talk to, they're just like so paralyzed by the decision making of should I declutter it or shouldn't I declutter it? And it's like, if you decluttered it, what is the worst thing that could happen? Like, yes, you have so to like buy it again. Be, uh, right. You have to buy it again. If it's sentimental, which does happen, right. like the odd time we accidentally declutter sentimental things, it's still like, oh, like that's a bummer. But for the most part, like, you know, so. Yeah, it's not a life or death decision. But sometimes that fear that is part of those life and death decisions, that fear is so huge inside our bodies and our minds and our hearts when we're trying to decide to let go. And now I find it so much easier to make those decisions. And I've built decluttering muscles. But back then the decision felt humongous. Like it was going like that one decision about a board game or a book was going to revolutionize my life and change my life forever. That one decision about one thing. And in hindsight, there it absolutely wasn't that way. But it felt that way because I was new to decluttering and had so many things that I didn't even know where to begin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what I say in uh, like in videos and in my membership. I'm like, don't start with the hard stuff. Start with the easy stuff. Build up those decluttering muscles. Like I have a friend um, who's decluttering her basement right now. And she even said to me, like, why did we start in the basement? Yep. Because there's all these boxes and we decluttered for an hour and I feel like we made no progress. And I'm like, yeah, like start somewhere where you can like get a little bit of a win in and feel like you're making progress, but also that you, yes, like you build up those decluttering muscles. Yeah. I, I, when somebody asked me that question, I recommend the bathroom because it's, there's less emotional decision-making that needs to happen usually in a bathroom. Um, it's more of like that financial guilt that you have to address of buying hair products or makeup products that you just didn't care for once you got them home. Um, and dealing with that emotion is a little less um, sentimental and emotional than dealing with something like sentimental from a deceased family member or um, something that it's going to be 100 small decisions like your kitchen or a basement, like your friend, where it's so many decisions, the volume of decisions is paralyzing. Not even the decision, the minute decision making itself, it's the volume of decisions you're facing. In the bathroom, there's probably less. So that's one thing I say is to just start in the bathroom if you're trying to do something, start in the bathroom and see how it feels. Empty it out and just put in what you actually use every single day and let everything else just kind of sit and collect dust for a month and see what happens. And the other one I, I recommend is visual clutter. Just walk around your house. What is stressing you out? What is bugging you? Throw it in a box. 
So you don't want to get rid of it yet. Just decide that it doesn't live there anymore. It now lives in a box in your garage. And when you have decided it doesn't actually need to come back into your house, then you move it out of your garage. And visual clutter in the bathroom, I always feel like are easy ways to de-stress from clutter. But a basement with lots of stuff, that's that's t- that's a tough place to start. I think the kitchen is a tough place to start decluttering too. I think that too. And it's funny because, uh, you know, I coach people with decluttering and the odd person is like, I want to start in the kitchen. And I think it's because they can just, and they know of so many things they want to declutter. One, one girl, she had like 15 spatulas and she managed to declutter like 10 yeah. of them or whatever. And I mean, you know, I have more than one of the same kind of spatula because sometimes when I'm cooking, you know, like yeah. I, I use two and blah, 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 but it's, I agree. It's, it's like dealer's choice, what works best. And even I've talked to people who I always say do sentimental last and they're like, my husband passed away oh, yeah. a year ago and I'm actually like ready to tackle his stuff. And I'm like, go for it. Right. But if you realize I'm getting stuck or I'm feeling bogged down, like maybe take a step back and say, start with the bathroom. Yeah. And it's huge to lean into yeah. those feelings too. When you are motivated mm-hmm. to declutter a specific thing and leaning into it, she, you know, your friend spent a year dealing with the grief and then it's suddenly like, I need, I need a change. I need this to be different. And yeah. leaning into that in the moment that you feeling that you're feeling that is also really important to learn to recognize. Yeah. And sometimes like we, our body or our brain or whatever is telling us do this now. Yeah. And it's like, okay. But then other times, if you're noticing fear coming up, that's not an actual message. That's fear. Mm -hmm. And what is it telling you? What is, what is it? What are you afraid of by decluttering it and asking yourself Mm. that and really being honest and, and deep with yourself? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid, you know, that you're going to need it? in a year? Are you afraid that you're going to have to respend money on it? Um, are you afraid it's going to come back into fashion <laughs> by getting rid of right. something from your closet? And now you have to buy those $80 jeans again because they came back into fashion. Um, it, addressing the fear and saying it out loud to yourself kind of lifts it out of your body. And you're able to say, wait a minute, that's ridiculous. Of course. Okay. I'm just, it needs to go because every time I walk in my closet, it's making me mad. <laughs> yeah. I love the, the, uh, like I think about, um, I believe boot cut jeans are coming back in style soon, but I'm like the ones that I had would not fit me now. Yep. That's so funny <laughs> that my, my friend texted me not four days ago and was like, I want to get rid of my boot cut jeans, but I'm afraid they're going to come back and I have to buy them again. <laughs> I'm like, just put them in a, in a box in the basement for now. And then if they come back, you're good. If not, you can get rid of them because they have not been in your closet. I like to keep it mer- very easy in my closet. Just like I like to be able to yeah. walk in, make easy, fast, simple decisions, be dressed for the day and get out. I don't want to have to rifle through 50 things. It complicates my morning. I just, that's not where I like to spend my time anymore. Um, and I, I love, I love collecting dresses and nice shirts and things to wear, but I like getting dressed fast. I just don't like to spend my time in there anymore. Yeah, I know. And, and it truly is like, I was talking to somebody yesterday and I said, you know, you're paying property tax on Mm. where this stuff is living. Like you're basically paying rent for boxes to be sitting around so i i have a like a maybe well two well one big box of stuff from my childhood that's it right and it wasn't until i was in my well started like really going minimalist but probably a little bit before that in my mid-30s when i was like oh like i don't need all this stuff but it was like I don't know if it's the generation you are are the same generation, but for me, I just was like, you just take your stuff with you and you just take it with you. And you being in with the military, your husband, you guys have moved stuff all over, right? And it's at every move, I've tried to live with a little bit less. And then the, Mm. the move before this one, I was done. I was done with 400 boxes of unpacking every 22 months. I was done. And when we moved here, we were down to, 200 boxes and but that was still 200 boxes of decisions 
of do I want to put this back into my house? Do I want to donate it? Um, And so we try to do a purge before we move and then after we move as well. Um, And that's just comes from years and years of moving where you sort of figure out your own process. But having boxes of stuff is like that silent to-do list that Dawn the Minimal Mom has mentioned so many times that it's Mm -hmm. begging your attention. It is begging your future decision of letting it go or keeping it or pulling it back into your house. Um, But if you're paralyzed by decision making, it might be good to throw it in a box and put it in the garage because you need to feel what it's like to simplify. You need to feel what it is like to not have those things in your home to be okay with it, to say, yes, this is what I was going for. This feeling, okay, that stuff in the, in the garage needs to go in my car so it can be donated. Yeah, it's it's actually interesting. I have uh, some friends and they had a, a, a garage fire. It wasn't like too severe, but enough that a lot of the stuff in the oh, garage yeah. got damaged. And they were actually like kind of relieved because it took care of that issue. It made the decision for them. Yeah, it really did. The fire made the decision for them. And we we had a flood uh 2019. It was a kitten that flooded our basement. And we had so many boxes that were damaged. Mm. And again, it was great. Like when stuff was water damaging, you'd be like, oh well, right. And and even if it's like childhood stuff, it's easier because it's like, oh well, like it's damaged. I like I don't know how you felt with the penguin overall. I can't remember, but it it's it makes that decision for you and it's like what would i do with this thing anyway like i had a yeah. rainbow bright doll that i remember <laughs> i had put a cast on and you hang on to the stuff but really what you're hanging on to are those beautiful childhood memories and then finally when you understand what it feels like to have other areas of your home simplified and organized it makes it so much easier to figure out what to keep versus what to declutter when you're looking at things like sentimental boxes and childhood boxes and that reverse decluttering where you decide what to keep before you decide what to declutter is what changed the game for me. Um, in 2020, after I was paralyzed over and over by deciding what to declutter, I reversed it and said, wait a minute, what am I going to keep? And the, the decision to keep was so far less than what I was choosing to declutter. And then by deciding, I only want to keep these three things out of these 25 things. Well, what does that mean for the other 22 things? I didn't pick them. What does that mean? And really sitting with that and saying, I actually don't want these things. I didn't make 22 small decisions. I made three considerable decisions and then just let go of the rest. And that is how I started to gain momentum and got rid of thousands of things. It's just reversed my thinking. And that came from uh, Francine J. The Joy of Less from her text, deciding what to keep is infinitely easier than deciding what to get rid of. And that just changed the game for me by flipping the thought process. Yeah, that's a good one. And I was going to ask you about that. So how do you feel like that compares to other methods? Like how does that feel in that moment when you're decluttering? Yeah. So like the one-to-one that we talked about, there's another method called um, the one method where you get rid of one thing from your house every day for a preset amount of days, like 30 days or 60 days. So you end up at the end with that number of things that you're getting rid of. It, the decision then is what am, what am I going to get rid of for my house? You're walking around your house trying to find something to get rid of. You're flipping the decision in choosing what you want to have in your life, not choosing what you don't want to have in your life. It's like a reverse thought process. It's a positive thought process. It's a reconnection to your stuff that you really do want to have. And I think any decluttering method that works for someone is the one they should use. Um, But when it compares to reverse decluttering, like um, the uh, Marie Kondo method, it's wonderful to really question, does this make me happy? Does this bring me joy? And deciding on a a category one at a time throughout your whole house, that might be a little more time consuming than you want to give to whatever decluttering project you're doing. But reverse decluttering, you can use pretty much anywhere in your house, your utensil drawer, your closet, your toys, your board games. Um, The only place I think it might not work very well would be papers, um, because there's papers that you you, just life documents that you need to protect and keep and action items that you need to take with some papers that you get home from school and stuff. But 
Um, I don't think that it would work well for papers, but pretty much everywhere else in your house, reverse decluttering can help by just saying, what do, what do I want out of this space? What do I want to be here? Oh, I love that. That is so great. And so what areas do you feel like it, that area works or that strategy works best? Uh, definitely toys. If you can do it with the kids, like just to say, what are your favorites? What do you enjoy playing with the most? Let's put that back on the shelf. And then figuring out what wasn't chosen. Well, why didn't you pick the Duplos? Well, I don't really play them anymore. How about we give it to a family that will play with it? And guiding kids through the, the decisions like that for toys is getting them to say, what, what do you enjoy playing with? What is your favorite? What do you want to keep? Instead of asking them to de detach from toys, which is hard for kids. Wait, I might want to play with that someday. I'm not done with that. But if you if you focus on the positivity of what they do want and then say, wait a minute, we didn't pick this. Why not? Um, I think it works really well in the kitchen and to sit and drawer by drawer, mug by mug. Do what do I want to keep? Do I want eight mugs or do I want two mugs? And or in my case, I think I had 44 mugs when I started. <laughs> like, why well, know it? There's never more than two people drinking coffee in my house at a time. Like there's not 44 people drinking coffee in my home. I don't need that. <clears throat> um, so I think it works in, in pretty much any space in your home to just change the question. What do I want to keep? And therefore look at everything you didn't pick. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's a really good one. And it, I mean, I could see that working for so many rooms and even the just in case mm. stuff as much it just and I totally get it like yes like maybe you will use it one day right and I often say to people maybe you can borrow or lend and then they're like yes but then some people don't take care of your stuff I'm like well then you make sure that you're you know this arrangement is with people who will right who you're trusting yeah 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 and because no you go um just opening a drawer and looking at it and asking yourself that question. If I was forced to empty this drawer right now, what would I keep? And then just close the drawer. You know, you don't have to take things out. You don't have to enact that decision right there in that moment. But plant the seed in your brain of what, wait a minute, I didn't pick that. I didn't pick this last time I asked this question. And coming mm -hmm. back to it over and over, you start to build those muscles, those decision-making muscles where you're more comfortable with what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. Yeah, absolutely. It's so true. Even in the bathroom, that would be a great place to yeah. even start that method because I think you've got curly hair. I've yeah. got curly <laughs> hair and it is a beast to find Ooh. what will work, right? And then I feel like it works for like three months and it's amazing. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, thank you. I'm not going to play anymore. And yeah. <laughs> and it's like the humidity and stuff. So I, I, mine, I live on Vancouver Island where it's very humid uh, except for in the summer, <laughs> which is funny. It's like the opposite of everywhere else. And so I can't have anything with like glycerin, mm -hmm. but every now and then I try something and I'm like, oh, this doesn't work. And I'd be like, I'm going to save it till summer. Right. Use this hair product for three months. And by then it often goes off anyway. Yep. So I love that you can be like, I'm not using this. I have this other routine that works. Yep. What do I actually oh. use in the bathroom? It's not even what do I yeah. want to keep? It's what do I use? And then mm. the pile of stuff that you don't use is probably a lot bigger than you'd think it would be in the bathroom because you just continually stash stuff like, oh, I'll, I'll try it again in a couple of months and you put it away. And then, it, you know, over time you have 20 bottles of curly hair supplies <laughs> because yeah. you keep trying the latest and the greatest to try to get that perfect curl. <laughs> we try. We try. I, that's good too. And even like the the linen closet with towels and things like that. Yes. The, the, I have to say <laughs> the one time where we were like, where are all the towels was when we had that flood, but there was no saving anything anyway, right. but it's like, you don't need a ton of extra towels and if they're frayed and whatever. You don't. And I, you know, that is an area of stress for me as a mom. That is, I used to spend so much time folding towels and sheets and blankets before mm -hmm. a couple years ago, I was like, what am I doing with myself? Like I'm spending hours of my life folding towels and I should be doing something else with that time and got rid of the towels. 
everybody has a hook on the bathroom door and it goes from the dryer to the hook and that's it. There's no more folding towels. And I have two guest towels that live in the basket in the, in the linen closet and they're protected from dust. And that's it. Okay, it's, it's the grandparents come stay with us. Here's a towel. <laughs> Like I was never that kid that like had a clean room and always put things away. And I generally clean up. It's actually funny because the garden is the one place where I can see my true habits of not always cleaning <laughs> up after myself. That's funny. Cause that's what, that's actually where I, I'm pretty tidy is my garden, yeah. but the rest of but the house, sometimes I'm just like, ah, whatever, but I'll be out in the garden, like picking every single weed and like cleaning around. Um, I, maybe just cause it's a hobby and it's not where, yeah. you know, I mean, I just spend a little bit of time out there in the mornings, but in the house you're in here all the time and it's mm. sort of in your face <laughs> and oh you're like, gosh. Oh, I'll well, it's funny. Later. Well, did you know that if you leave weeds out for a week, they'll dry up and they're easier to pick up. <laughs> If you, leave, if you eat them and put them in a pile. <laughs> Sometimes if you don't pick them, they turn into tomato plants. Like <laughs> my <True>. view, <laughs> where the squirrels and the birds have transplanted and created some volunteers in other pots. Yeah, I had a bunch of volunteer tomatillos of all things. Nice. I know. But then they rotted. by the, I don't know. They started late. And by the time they almost were, it was like November. Go to <laughs> now. <laughs> but... Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. So can you share like your favorite tip? Yeah. For decluttering? Um, definitely start in the bathroom or with visual, mm. visual clutter that is stressing you out. Um, just if you mm. want a quick win, just make yourself a space in your bathroom. If you have the luxury of a drawer or a designated place on the, on the bathroom counter, um, even mm. if you got a basket from another room and said, this is my one get ready basket, put all the things you need to get ready for the day, mm. makeup, hair gel, whatever it is in that space, the drawer, the basket, whatever, and then get rid of everything else. Put it in a box somewhere else in your closet or something, and then just have that and keep it easy to get ready and just start simplifying in one area and keep it simple. And then add as you need. Oh, I, I actually do use this hair gel, you know, once or twice a week. I'm just going to add it to my basket. Um, and just start with one thing and be specific about it. Mm. The advice sometimes in the decluttering Facebook groups is, oh, just start, just start, just pick something to start. But it's, it's hard to just start when you have mm -hmm. a lot of decisions that you're facing. And Mm. Be specific. Bathroom or something visual in your kitchen that's bugging you. Something visual in your family room that you're just like, I hate this space. Deal with that space. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. That's awesome. Well, this was really fun, Erica. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, where can people find you? Thanks for having me on, Robin. Um, so if you go to YouTube, I'm Erica Lucas. You can also go to my web website, ericalucas.com, and you'll find a blog there and links to the YouTube channel as well. Awesome. Well, this was really fun. Thank you. Thank you.